What is up, Combo Nation? This is Grown B. Hopefully you... Oh, this isn't right. I gotta move this to the correct screen. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and start that over. Combo Nation, what is up, everybody? This is Grown B. Hopefully you guys had a good holiday. We took a couple of weeks off, spending time with family, friends, this, that, and the other. And so now we're finally jumping back into the series where we have been reviewing season one of each of the DC CW shows. And right now we're about to talk about Supergirl, but I will let the guys say what's up real quick before we jump into that. Yo, what's up? It's it's your boy, Feet Daddy. I mean... When they J here to make your day. <laughs> Go ahead, Batman. Batman wants you to see Rod. This dude's annoying, man. This dude's annoying, bro. What do you mean, bro? What do you mean what I mean? You're an idiot, dude. Okay, you are like, an look, idiot. Ooh. I'm not an idiot. You you know who? who well, the only time I was an idiot was when I found out. <laughs> spoiler alert: who the the Martian Manhunter was on season one of Supergirl, and that was amazing. Yeah. Um. By the way, uh, really quick, uh, before we get started, uh, Jay has started doing a series of um of Pokemon Shield. And I think he's about to start up Persona 5 as well. So make sure that y'all follow the link that's going to be in the description to check out some of his content. And I'll be making an announcement uh, within the next couple of days on our Facebook page, just kind of breaking down where y'all can find certain content when I'm specifically going to be streaming uh, and things like that. So just be looking out for that. Um, but Y'all have another avenue uh, to get content throughout the week. And so I'll make sure that I put uh, Jay's link in the description so that you guys can start checking that stuff out. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into season one of Supergirl. And Batman, since it's fresh on your mind, I think a little bit more than uh, myself and Jay's, I'll let you open up and, and kind of start the discussion on some of the things that you thought uh, worked well or didn't work well or just some of the things that stood out to you. I uh, I honestly like the villains. I thought the villains of the season were uh, were pretty uh, pretty solid. They were mm. uh, they were menacing. Um, they had motives. You knew what their motives were. You knew what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. Mm, um, definitely. I think it was uh, Mon. Is his name or Non? Non, and then yeah, uh, Astra. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think they. I definitely think that they were saw. I think that they were absolutely solid villains. I think the the weekly villains were solid as well. Um, I pers and you know I think every show for the most part does this, but I uh, would have liked to see a non Kryptonian. Uh, well, not Kryptonian, but non. Well, they were Kryptonians, right? Yeah. Yeah. Non uh, and. Uh... I, I would have liked to see something different kind of right off the bat but then again i don't know enough about the supergirl lore in general outside of the tv show and so maybe that's kind of just her main thing uh, but overall i feel like they did uh they did the villains uh really well uh go ahead jay i just I, the villains were different to me and not in a bad way it just it just seemed like okay well think about it it's a kryptonian Mm -hmm. So that you can't just throw some run of the mill regular dude that you're gonna throw at the arrow or the yeah. flash. Like these people can punch through walls and take a nap on the moon. So you know, it's it's very imperative that you get somebody that's gonna be on their level. And I Absolutely. think even the non super powered ones brought just some kind of challenge that was different each week. And it was you just know so what? fun that, to watch that. That's when they had that um that season had that one guy. Uh, Max Maxwell Lord Maxwell. wasn't he in that season? Yep, yep. I think as just a general anti, well, he, not he wasn't an anti-hero by definition, but foil. He was a foil character. Uh, a foil character is 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 a literary uh, character used to amplify um, the way another hero or protagonist goes about making their decisions. So not necessarily the villain, but just a character to show you like 
the, that the hero's way isn't the only way, but there's also still another way that's not necessarily uh, being the villain. And I feel like he um, played that role really well. And what I really liked about that is because like uh, sometimes you want to see something different than up oh, we're two strong characters going up against each other or we're two fast characters going up against each other the fact that there was this dynamic of you know supergirl you're supposed to be um at that at this point in the story this was all we had right we didn't know that there was going to be um because during this time right they they could they would only show like superman's cape right or if you watch the show closely she would email she would email clark but it would be like quick messages or you would never hear him speak you would never see him his face and that's just how it was at that time because they were really um they were really picky about some of the bigger name characters showing up on the cw shows so as far as yeah. we knew this this was all we had, right? So she was yep. supposed to be the most powerful character in that CW verse, and to have a character, um, a like a character who wasn't super power but was always able to um, kind of disrupt the things that she had going on, I think was really interesting. I was hoping that that would that throughout the season that would become he as a character and his connection um with supergirl and the team would grow and and, and become a bigger deal um uh, but i don't like think a partnership we, or what not even necessarily a partnership but just like a, a a constant reminder that maybe you're not doing everything the right way supergirl maybe there's another way to do things and maybe I, you know, this this character that you feel like is snobby and sle sleazy, maybe I'm right some of the time. I expected a little bit more of that throughout that season that we never quite got. Um, but I think he's just a perfect character to bring up as far as, I mean, I know we were talking about the villains, but I feel like he still kind of filled what a villain's role is to be, which is basically to challenge and push the protagonist to move forward and, and grow as a character. Well, my thing about it is just that he, he represents the, the, the coldest choice possible in every situation. Mm hmm where Supergirl is still that young, optimistic, bushy eye, like, I don't have to kill people, you know? I feel like Max, he, he brings into that, 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 that raw, cold, precise killer instinct that we yeah. don't need to see from Supergirl. Yeah. Because if we did, he would be right about everything that he wants. But you know what? I think another thing about that is, at that point, they really didn't know if they were going to get access to Lex right so they just made him so they so they made his character a more lex lex like character even though max is an actual comic book character they decided to yeah. kind of split that persona and give a little bit of that lex luther uh kind of mentality and approach to things they went ahead and gave it to him which i think i, you can I, tell. I think that worked really well and i'm glad that they were doing stuff like that um in the early seasons when they didn't know if warner brothers was going to be you know lenient on what different properties uh, that they get to use which sucks i mean they're doing a whole lot better on it now obviously uh that they fully embrace this kind of idea of the multiverse but uh, i think that that mentality held them back for a long time as far as pushing this um as far as pushing the the cw verse forward because marvel wasn't doing any of that you know what i mean like disney and marvel weren't doing any of that and as a result they were flourishing so but yeah um, go ahead batman yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Uh, specifically, Jay. Um, yeah. Was I the only one when they were emailing back and forth that imagined like you know the guy who plays Clark Kent now like typing to her because like you know what Clark Kent looks like. You know? No, I didn't. I didn't imagine like that. I thought whenever she was messaging him. Whenever she was messaging him, I always thought of the guy from Smallville. I don't know why. Um, I Tom thought she... Welling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I... She was like just messaging him because it's a CW verse and he played essentially Superman for a minute. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, that's who they're going to use. And then they show 
this different guy. I was like, this is this is hideous. I don't like this guy. <laughs> Give but me they didn't even Cavill. show him in season one, though, did they? They didn't. No, it was yeah. Some, they didn't at show the him end of season, season two. One. They just show his body. No, it's season 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 one. They just show his upper body. Is that what that is? Yeah, I think in season one they. Something crazy like that. I just, I, I get what you're saying though with it. Yeah. I was like, who the heck is she texting? Because in my head, it's either Henry Cavill or, or, or Tom. And then you get this weak looking. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> but still. Hey, I just hold, wasn't hey, happy hold with on, it. Hold on just a second, guys. I got to switch a setting real quick. Um, okay. So give me just one moment. Okay, I think we're, yeah, all right. I got us back. Um, I think Batman, you were saying something, right? Oh yeah, I was just talking about um, like Clark Kent and stuff. Oh uh, yes, um, yes. Um, one thing. Go ahead, Sorry. go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. One thing I did want to uh, get into is uh, he's not my favorite character in the show, but one of the characters I really liked. Because he kind of reminded, uh, kind of reminded uh, me, like, of me. He kind of. Um, when? Uh, yeah, when? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think he um, he is actually to this day. I think he's still just my favorite character of the show. Uh, a so... lot of interesting characters have come in and out. And, and I just like those genuine characters that find a way to um, to to bring something to the team, uh, but also kind of have their own hi- history, their own past, their own goals, you know. And so I think and... his his story in general, um, as far as his his connection to one of the biggest like DC villains I thought was mm-hmm. excellent. Really, really well, uh, well told story. I think. I think yeah. wasn't that the uh, toy the, the the toy, toy master, master, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Toy. And I think that I think that dynamic, that element of of storytelling that they used in season one, uh, I I feel like it's a little um, under. I, I think season one overall is an underrated uh, season of really any of the Arrowverse shows uh people kind of I think Supergirl's kind of well I how I put it is that Supergirl's really underrated just when I go online and I talk about it with anybody like they're like what you know <laughs> like it's never like a oh you watch Supergirl too like what like no it's kind of yeah. like a you know oh the the the, the reason for that is that people who don't actually understand comic book literature and the reflections that it takes on its uh, on its society and of its culture, they think that um, they they think that stuff like politics and um, and social issues are not reflected and shouldn't be reflected um, in comic book shows or movies or whatever. But that's but, the basis of comic books. That's exactly. I had a long conversation with a guy a while back. It was like, I don't understand why you're crying and complaining about politics being a a a part of comics. But when you look when you look back on the history of comic books, they've always reflected the current culture and climate of whatever was going on in that particular um in that particular time period or that nation. Right. So, I mean, I just think it's it's foolish to try to paint this picture that, oh, uh, like people who try to use comic books like I get it. Some people use comic books as an escape, you know, from the real world. But at the end of the day, it's not really an escape from the real world. It's a way it brings the real world it, in there. It brings the it, it creates context for you to interpret the world that you live in in a different way. Right. It's supposed to help you with that. And so people who are so stuck on, you know, trying to forget about their horrible life or their horrible relationship or whatever. I think those are the people who struggle with shows like Supergirl because they think that it's a little bit too real. 
right? And I think that's kind of been the biggest problem that people have had with it. Don't get me wrong, like it does get a little extra sometimes with certain types of narratives. Um, but at the end of the day, like I welcome and embrace them tackling issues and not really necessarily caring uh, who's being sensitive towards them because, and, and that's what Greg Berlanti does in general, you know, um, with with the stuff that he produces. And so, yeah, definitely. I, I, I appreciate this season, uh, but it, but overall, like it's a show that people, um, have, have kind of given a bad rap mainly, like I'd say 80% of the bad rap it gets is being too quote unquote political or cultural. Um, what was it? I wanted to add one thing to win. We've okay. talked about a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. They've gone through some hard stuff. Quentin Lance. Yeah. Joe West. Mm -hmm. um, all of them. But man, just, I could feel his pain the entire season. Yeah. And he kept getting friend zone, man. Oh, Wait, who are we about? that's what we're talking about. I thought we were talking yeah. about his dad. We're talking about him being friend zoned. Damn it, Batman. Oh, no. I ain't tripping about the friend zone. That, that was painful. No, man. no, no. No, because we watched three seasons. You know, I'm just going to call Three seasons <laughs> of The Flash, okay? I don't want to hear nothing about him in the friend zone, okay? I want to hear none of that. Barry. All right? Yeah, but. Barry's different because you it's, know he was it is, end up with Iowa. It is a little bit different for Barry. It's slightly different for Barry. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Well, what about Laura Lance? Well, she said I have to sit here and watch her sister swap spit with Oliver. Come on, bro. It's not the same though because Laurel didn't care about Oliver as much. I thought she always had a love for him. She all, but see, she did always have a love for him, but that love, Trent, it 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 changed. It changed in form, right? It yeah. went from a romantic love to a really kind of a almost a big brother type love weirdly enough uh she's really always weird. gonna have that appreciation and that care for him but i think it did suck because at the end of the day like i think they kind of established very early that we are not getting a win and Supergirl type of relationship. Nobody wants to see that. I kind of wanted to see it. I don't want to see that. She'll break him in half. Well, I mean, she's not going to break him in half any less than she would break Jimmy in half. Hey, hey, Jimmy, Jimmy built for that. What you mean? Jimmy is not <laughs> built for anything. Hey, hey, Jimmy done been with alien chicks. It's okay. He Man. here for it. Who was he with? Well, it's not just that. <laughs> Nobody was still. That's what I thought. Um, but yeah, I mean, once you start to realize, like, dude, this dude's not getting this girl. He's not getting her. He's uh, too nice. He's too it nice. Wasn't, it wasn't just that, though. It was also the stuff with his dad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad at a very like young age, and he's yeah. been alone, man. That's why it hurts so much because he wants he wants to feel loved. He wants he wants yes. to feel accepted. Yes. And so on and, and and it really does suck because like his dad comes back and like pretends to care about him, doesn't he? Yeah, he basically used him. Yeah. To get back that is house. unfortunate. That that's yeah. tough. That's something that we kind of haven't seen throughout the Arrowverse, that type of dynamic, you know. Um, I mean, I think at one point he did like want to be with his son, but he's he wants to corrupt his son. His son is nothing like him. Yeah. I mean, he's not like his father. That yeah, you know, that is now that I think about it, that is probably one of the sadder dynamics that doesn't get a big focus. I thought um, it got like a whole two episodes. A whole two episodes. I think it was, was one. It? It where was, uh, okay, no no no. It was <laughs> one where it was like underlying and, and something was going on in the background. And then there yeah, was but, a whole episode where we dealt with it. No, 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 but, no. So that's not enough. In, I'm saying in comparison. Like, you see Oliver oh, okay. and Yao Fei, Oliver and Slade, Oliver and Quentin. Um, like, you see those uh, Barry and Eobor, uh Barry and Joe. Like, those relationships and the, and, and the dynamics of pain and pleasure and how they get loved, but at the same time deal with pain. Like, you see those 
truly come out and just flower. Whereas you did get just a couple of episodes of that. But then, you know, once I think once his dad goes to jail or whatever, we we get kind of a get over it type of um, Mm -hmm. like response from the basically the rest of the of the cat, the rest of the the teams and uh, and and really for win himself. Granted, a uh, slight spoiler alert, they do follow up on that, um, you know, within a couple of seasons. But even still, that was a very interesting dynamic. Um, and, you know, there, there's always a sweet spot between um, overdoing it and, and doing it just right. And so maybe, um, you know, they're playing it safe by not overdoing it. But I'm, I'm glad you brought up that relationship, uh, Batman, because I... Um, you know, it's been so long, dude, since I've watched that season. So there's a lot of small, um, there's a lot of really small um, things that I've kind of forgotten that uh, that we should definitely should be expanding upon. So, and why I brought up the friend zone is because at the end of that episode, he yeah. does try to kiss Kara, and he just all that stuff with his dad had just happened, and then she yeah. She rejected him like that oh was i remember that and, and rejection from the uh, yeah that was a bad choice you should be doing that man that's a bad choice that everybody makes look look you're right but still what jay <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. Hmm. I ain't gonna say nothing. Okay. No, don't get man. Don't get get on me for. <laughs> hey, I didn't make that choice. Somebody yeah. else made hmm. that choice at, at me. You a grown man. You are a grown man. Hey, you are a grown left, man. I chose. You are I chose a grown not man. To you I are an adult. Yes, you exactly. Hey, I chose not to leave, but I didn't choose to initiate it. All right. Mm, all right. Whatever. Whatever. So don't even with that whatever. No. Okay. I, ain't trying to hear it. I was in a. I ain't trying know, to hear it. Yo, I'm trying to hear this Martian Manhunter talk. Let's talk Martian about Manhunter. that. Let's get into Martian Let's Manhunter. Let's talk about the Martian yeah. Manhunter. So somebody hey, want to be hey, out of this world. Let me ask <laughs> you guys this. Uh, I know that y'all aren't. Maybe uh, you you guys may not be the best to ask. But were y'all completely thrown off guard by that? Yes. I was so thrown off. I was like, who is this? And then I remember texting you. I'm like, is this the Martian Manhunter? And you were like, no. I was like, it's some kind of CW baddie. Cause there ain't no way he just out here doing some crazy stuff like this, and he's not either the Martian Manhunter or, or somebody that can compete with Superman. I was like, who could compete with Superman? And then, but see, he's here, the conversation. Here, here, here's the weird part about it. There would, there uh, was not, there was not an opportunity. <coughs> there was no way for me to know, right? Because even if I knew the comic book lore. Right, yeah, a little bit more about like I know that Martian Manhunter is John Jones, but even if mm-hmm. I knew Hank Henshaw, who is Cyborg Superman, mm-hmm. I would have thought, okay, he's Cyborg Superman, so why would he then be Martian Manhunter? And so like I don't know, there weren't a ton of people watching it and discussing it uh, mm-hmm. during that time, so I never really understood if people were completely thrown off guard about that or not. That caught me off guard. But I was hell. thrown off. I was thrown off. Unfortunately, um, Martian Manhunter in this, Martian Manhunter in uh, Justice League Unlimited, uh, Martian Manhunter in Justice League, Martian Manhunter in the uh, Justice League Animated Universe, uh, move, uh, Cinematic Universe, this no one ever does Martian Manhunter correctly, and he just, I mean, at this point, there is there there really is no way to do Martian Manhunter correctly because he's because so he, broken. What do you expect? Okay, well, just don't include him because well, you can't. You gotta have a part of him for like, let's say, this is my theory, and I hope no one crashes it. But I think there's gonna be like this really big super episode. And it's going to involve everybody. And I'm really excited because I hope it actually does. But I've been avoiding spoilers or looking it up. But I think, like, he's that weapon that you call in because you don't have Superman. Um, you don't have Batman. Who, who else you going to call? Wonder Woman? No, she ain't well, there. Well, see, here's the thing, though. <clears throat> if that would work, then that would be cool. But it doesn't work, <clears throat> so it's not. 
Like he doesn't um, do anything. He doesn't. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd say that Supergirl, the show, has done a little bit more with Martian Manhunter. Like they they gave him his shine. They gave him his 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 props. But um, man, a lot of uh, fictional mediums just. And I don't know if it's just in an effort to amplify what characters like Superman look like. But I mean. Martian Manhunter is supposed to be just as strong as Supes, um, around his speed, uh, except he has these extra powers like telekinesis, the ability to uh, phase through anything, and and telepathy, and mind wiping. Morph. Like he's supposed to be, and, and met, um, not metamorphosis. Uh, is uh, that be able to change shape? Or yeah, size. shape, shape shifting. Shape shift. Yeah, like he's supposed to be OP. And I feel like they do this thing where they find a reason to get to take him out of commission quickly um, for the sake of the narrative. Uh, and they do that with pretty much every hero. But I feel like, man, Martian Manhunter gets it bad. <laughs> they might do him well for the Snyder Cut. They're not. Maybe. No, nah, he ain't getting um, that. The reason, the reason why is because, one... He doesn't look like us. So people aren't going to get hype. You know why people get hype over Superman, over Martian Manhunter? Because he looks like a human. And this is not me being racist or alienist. It's because you can identify with Superman. Yeah. Whereas Martian Manhunter, you know, as much as progressive as you want to say, you're not going to wake up in the morning and be like, man, I wish I had some green skin so I can go suck but, on but some you, Supergirl. But, you know, what's, like, but no. you know what's interesting about that, though? What's up? Um, the reason why uh, Martian Manhunter always chooses, with the exception of one or two moments, he always chooses to uh, present himself as a black man is because when he chose his form, he saw how black people were treated, right? And that reminded him of how his people are treated on his home planet. So like his specific choice to present himself as an African American man is like the exact thing that you're saying um makes him not uh somebody that people will really want to get behind. Oh, I'm uh, talking about the pure I'm talking about his alien form. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that like his choices as far as looking like that is specifically to um to appeal to what you're saying uh and oh, i just think okay, and okay, i just okay. think that that's an interesting thing for that character uh and that you make that comment because it's like even the character himself understands like i you know people got to be able to identify with me you know, and I identify yeah. with them as well. You know, these people are treated kind of like how my people are treated. You know, there's, there's, the, ironically, um, the people who oppress the Martians on his planet are other Martians and they're quote unquote white Martians. White and so, Martians. Um, but so I, I just thought that that was an interesting thing that you brought up. Um, real quick, I, uh, I did want to bring up because uh, I know you asked I was not caught off guard in any way because up to that you weren't point, caught off sure. guard at all you knew it was Martian Whoa, Manhunter off rip hang on hang on hear me out okay he did have red eyes hear me out though because a couple weeks ago I watched Supergirl a couple weeks ago I've seen every crossover event up to this point mm -hmm. yeah that's how I wasn't caught off guard I already knew who he was oh well see that doesn't count then that doesn't count <laughs> we're talking already about knew. when they revealed I'm, it I'm just saying though I wasn't caught off guard personally because I already knew. Yeah, no, no crossover episodes are dangerous. I have to skip them. They're sometimes. very <laughs> dangerous, honestly. They're extremely excruciatingly <laughs> dangerous. That's why I tried to. Uh, but but see, at least you don't get spoiled too bad because I gave you the order. Um, mm. Oh yeah, that's a good order to watch. I gave I I I made it to where <laughs> if you get spoiled bad, it. It, it, you could have avoided it's it. It's on my own doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, I have to go out of my way to get spoilers now because, like, that list, I, I haven't been spoiled at all. Yeah, so. Hmm. You what know else? I need to get spoiled on? John Diggle being the Green Lantern. There I is need to no, know if it happens or not. There is no John Diggle. 
What do you um, mean? Cat Grant. Oh yes, that's She's definitely fine. something we need. Cat? She is feist. She is. She is fierce. And when I first saw her, I was like, man. Why she do I is feel like we've mean. talked about? Oh, because we did the side characters. Yeah. I let yeah. Cat throw me against the wall. Cat? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Cat can get it. She's just so powerful. I'm attracted to that. I don't know why. She reminds me. A, she reminds me, her. Although these characters are drastically different in terms of personality, I feel like they're at their core, like who they are and the way they influence the world around them. She reminds me a lot of Moira. She reminds mm-hmm. me of a good time. Mm-hmm. That's what she reminds me of. I, I, She's um, just so strong. I love. Yes, I think. And that's one of the things that I love. And honestly, that's probably my biggest criticism of the Arrowverse after each show has two or three seasons. Their ability to write strong female characters completely independent of the male narratives just kind of falls off a cliff after a while. You know, and um, and and that's something that always because you had so many strong female characters off rip, Sarah, Moira, Cat, um, what's her name? I hate my father. Um, oh, oh, I know. You're Helena. About. Um, yeah. Ooh, what's her name? Hello. Nissa. Like there were just there were just strong female characters who who had multiple ways of displaying set strength. That's the most important thing. Like, um, go go ahead, Batman. Sorry. Um, I was just gonna say, like, every episode when anyone threatens her, anybody, even when Supergirl, she's like, I'm "Yeah, scared of you." Yeah. Like she she's like, "I will cancel." Come you. Come at me. Come at me. <laughs> she, but you know what? She, she knows her, it her, down. <laughs> her tough, um, and forceful and aggressive ex- um, exterior makes her moments with Kara and Supergirl that much more powerful because she's able to reach down a little bit deeper and show that there is a sweet side that she has that she has mm-hmm. that that gum on the inside of that uh of, of the sugary blow pop, you know and so I I just I don't know when I first realized that I really liked that character but I but it was quick it was quick that I realized, like, really this character is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. but but she also, at she the same time, her. but look, but she also wasn't at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's when she tried to kill her, though. She, she, wait, what are you talking about, Jay? I don't remember that. Remember, remember when yeah, Supergirl, she goes evil. yeah, Supergirl went evil for a minute, oh, and then she was like, she's yeah. canceled. Yeah. And then, and then Kat was like, well, you know, she didn't know what was going on, but she was like, you ain't finna kill me. And not let me tell the world. And so she did what she was supposed to do. She like she put her on blast. Uh, and see. then she held her accountable. Uh, she did. Mm-hmm. I'll say this. I don't think any other character, support or main, has the perfect balance of tough love and coddling the way Cat Grant does. True. I think every other I think every other character either leans more towards the coddling side or leans more towards uh towards the tough love side. Like I think her balance with it is so perfect. So I just really That's appreciate that character. Me. It's just to, it shut up, Jay. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Unfortunately, since the um cuz you know, um the the show was originally on CBS as we talked about before. Uh, and it's shot in L.A. Well, Cat lives in it. I mean, not Cat. Uh, Calista, uh, Cal- Calista, I think is her Flockhart. name. Flockhart. Um, yeah. She lives in L.A., so she was able to shoot. When when it went over to CW, they started shooting in um, in uh, Vancouver, and she wasn't trying to move out there, right? And so that's why she wasn't a character. Uh, a regular character anymore in that show. I'm surprised that they didn't find at least a couple of more ways to use her, like on seasons like three, four, and five. But granted, I mean that makes sense. People don't want to fly all over uh, the country. For Wait, sure. I don't get enough Cat Grant after season two. I, I, after she, after she, um, did she leave? 
Yeah, no. around like she's episode two or three. Yeah, so if he's on three. Then yeah. Okay, so yeah, she gone. She not coming back. Cause that oh. new guy's there, and he's he's way worse than her so far. Like yeah, I don't like him. Me. So I wish they brought her back. Well, now I don't want to watch this show. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. She uh she is in fact gone. Um, but one of the one of the best characters in the show for sure. One of the best characters in the Arrowverse, for sure. Oh yeah, she ain't no Joe S. Let's let's calm down now. Mm, she ain't no John Diggle. Six, she's five or six times uh, better than Joe. Ten or fifteen okay. times oh, better than, uh, yeah. than Diggle. Okay, all right. I'm gonna need you to calm down. L- Lums is fighting words right there. Ten Do you know how strong fi- of a character Joe is? Joe can break the multiverse ten, with his hands. Ten okay? or fifteen times better. Than John hey, let me and something. Joe. Let me tell you something. Joe got hitters, all right? All Joe got to do is say, Barry! He can go back in time, all right? All right? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't be sleeping on Joe West. <laughs> Speaking of Barry, I did want to get into that awesome ooh, crossover. Ooh, crossover episode. Yeah, it was so good! Was so cool. yeah. <laughs> and that's the fact that, that, that it's a different, y'all? like, multiverse. I was like, that's nice. That was that's, good, that's that was nice. good to y'all? I yeah, liked it. I, I it enjoyed it. it. You, I thought it was mean? good, it was but I mean, I'd give it an eight. It was lighthearted. That's what I like. I it, it, it kept with the shelf. But you know, uh, I mean, excuse was me, guys. Quirky. <laughs> you know how, like, um, you know how typically when you have crossovers like that, the guest character gets watered in favor mm-hmm. of the uh, of the, the main uh, the main character. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like they watered Barry a little bit too much. Did they? Um, oh yeah, it's girl power, man. Remember, yeah. Barry got smacked by that lightning and didn't get off for a, a half an hour. Hey, hey, dumb girl power. But more importantly, I pretty strong though. No, she's not. What I would have liked to at least see, I and stuff like that, dude. I like to see clear moments where they do something like show. Uh, like I know they they kind of hinted at it a little bit, but you need to show give give Barry those great moments. It's like yeah, Supergirl, you're fast, but I'm the Flash, you know, type shit, where he gets to show like you know I know you're strong, I know you can fly, but I'm way faster than you. That's why they call me this. I do this, um, but all in all, 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 all in all, I I mean I I did enjoy it. I thought it was one of the better parts of that season. Uh, but I feel like they could have done it a little better. I, I think was what, they, what they took away from in that episode was Shabon. That was her first appearance as Banshee, as the villain. And mm-hmm. last for the entire season, I believe. So she really didn't get that much. And most people weren't going to be focusing all on her, you know. They'd focus on Barry and Supergirl. Yeah. I'll focus on Shabon. <laughs> But honestly, if that what was an episode mean? of The Flash, Flash would have just snatched her up, took her somewhere, snatched up, yeah. what's her name, and took her somewhere. Um, and honestly, if Flash wasn't there, Supergirl probably would have just done that on her own, too. Like, she probably would have just took her into the atmosphere where she couldn't uh, breathe, and it's called it a day. Um, oh, but it, 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 it was solid. It was, it was a solid crossover. Um I mean, honestly, it's just what you would expect from a from a mid season crossover, you know, nothing too big. Um, but at the same time, it, it it was definitely worth having the extra character there. So, I, I liked it. I was excited for it. I thought it was cool. Another I character, was... um, I like Jimmy Olsen a lot, but I think one of the strongest characters is yeah. obviously her sister. Uh, Whose sister? Supergirls. <laughs> Yeah, I forget her name again, man. Alex? Uh, Alex, yeah. Alex, my bad. <laughs> you know what, man? I, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'm not going to talk about Alex. <laughs> uh, I think she is a strong character in that first season. Uh, but I'm not big on her character right now. <laughs> but I think, I, I think she's... I think she's well. You know what? We're talking about season one, so I'm just gonna talk about season one. She's definitely a very solid, very strong character in season one. 
Uh, I think she's kind of that that backbone, that um, that that conscious, that extra bit of strength uh, for Kara and for Supergirl. And I think it's just really, obviously, really important to have a character like that for her. She needs she needs that yeah. because at the end of the day, like she doesn't really have her parents like that. I mean, she has her foster parents, but her dad is. Well, I did, did. I think they thought he was dead, or he disappeared, or he disappears. Yeah, that he disappears. Is revisited in season two. So. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I think that she perfectly plays the role um, that she perfectly plays that role that they place her in in season one. Uh, as her role kind of evolves, um, she struggles just a little bit as a character. But other than that, um, you know, I think she was just the perfect running mate for Kara uh, throughout season one. Mm, You know what? No, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. One more thing I wanted to. uh, And one more thing, Alex. Uh, (laughs) Okay, all right. And uh, Hank is the father daughter relationship. Oh, that's good. That's a good thing to bring up, Batman. I totally forgot about that dynamic. Good that's a point, really good, good dynamic. Yeah, that father daughter that. relationship was perfect. I think they did a re- they did do a really good job with that. Um, they painted that well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because, uh, but I think a big part of that is that like he his his obligation to um fill that void to her and to Kara because he was one of the last people to quote unquote see her father alive mm-hmm. right and so it's almost like i had the opportunity to you know your father quote unquote gave up his life to save me and now i give up my life really he's giving his life to them you know and i just think that um that with everything that she struggles with him always kind of be there as a shoulder as someone that she um could lean on um and just kind of help her through those like tough parts of her life you're definitely right about that that dynamic is one of the the biggest and strongest dynamics just across the arrowverse because he only gives her that you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, only and, and, her and, and it's not a <laughs> knock on like joe it's not a knock on uh quentin or anything like that but those characters just have general qualities that just kind of flow out of them that anyone around them reap the benefits of however um you know the the martian manhunter uh tank henshaw character like he specifically has that that type of relationship with them and only uses it with them and so that's definitely a really strong piece of season one that that you that can go uh overlooked um like we literally almost did before you brought it up so i appreciate you bringing it up he also uh he saves her i don't know if you guys remember but she was she was getting drunk she uh uh she uh she was about to drive home drunk and then she gets Mm -hmm. you know she gets arrested and he shows up he's like hey no, yeah, why don't you come work for us. Oh, I forgot all about that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, you know what? I definitely need to walk that season down again uh, <laughs> sometime soon because there's a lot of stuff that I mean that we're that that's just kind of we're bringing up here. Um, that's good stuff. Um, and he was also a father. Martian Manhunter was a father before. Yep, he, he lost over. his kids. Yeah, and his wife and everything. He lost. Mm-hmm. He lost everything. He lost everything. He yeah, he's the epitome of pain. Yeah, he is the epitome of pain. Unfortunately, man had a sad, 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 sad story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are. Uh, we're. We got about what? Maybe one or two uh, minutes left. We're here at forty-four minutes now. Uh, any any last minute uh, comments that that either of you guys want to uh, want to make? Um, I say it every video. I'm gonna say it every time. John Diggle for Green Lantern. Let's go! <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Batman, what about you? Any oh. any last uh, last points you wanted to make? I 
I was always skeptical watching Supergirl because mm-hmm. don't hate on me. When yeah. I first watched it, I thought it was a little bit cheesy. That's, yeah. that's oh, what I did too. My yeah. I did too. Was. But then I started watching more CW shows, and I I guess mm-hmm. I got more accustomed to it. Mm-hmm. And then I came back to it, and I'm like, you know what? You it's know what, man? It's got I a think good that, story. Yeah, I think that's actually perfect, man. I think that's a perfect way to to kind of end this particular uh this particular recording. The fact that you know I asked you about Supergirl a couple of months ago, and you were like, nah, man, I I, I don't care for it, whatever, whatever. And that's totally fine. But it but I think. After having a conversation with, I think, what, me and me and Jay, uh, mm-hmm. me and somebody else were just telling you, man, just give it a give it a shot. It's a good show. I think it like, was me. It was like, man, just give it a shot. It's a it's a good show and it has really good moments in it. And to be honest, for you to be able to go back and literally watch the same thing, you literally just you literally just watch the same thing. But you had a totally different lens that you watched it with, and it allowed you to really enjoy, um, you know, a show in a way that you weren't able to before. And I think that is just an important. I think that's important for anybody who gets involved with, you know, shows or movies or books or anything like that, just to be more open and talk to. You know, see what other people that you care about or other people that enjoy some of the stuff you enjoy. Talk to them. See what they like. Yeah. See if they can, you know, give you a perspective on something. Because, you know, honestly, there's a lot of good stuff that people can miss out on um, when you're not open to having these type of conversations. So I think that's just a, I think you watching that show and enjoying it is a really good uh success story really uh because a lot of people are very stubborn about certain things and you could have been that way you could have said no i don't want to watch it because i don't care uh i don't care i was for a while but then i was like you know what yeah give it another shot and changing that perspective in the narrative that you have on Mm -hmm. those kind of videos absolutely so with that being said if you haven't watched season one of supergirl go ahead and check it out we just talked about some great moments and there's a lot of things that we actually kind of left out um to be honest so Mm. there's a lot of still great things to be excited about for that season next week uh we are going to talk about legends season Mm -hmm. one uh dc legends of tomorrow season one and um I'm I'm excited to talk about that. I think there were some great moments there. I think that's one of Jay's favorite shows, and so yeah, let's go, Team Snart. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, nah, Team Snart. Let's go, baby. It's, it's gonna be let's it's gonna go. be a fun time. Remember, link in the description for Jay's YouTube channel. Link in the description for all of our stuff, guys. So I mean, if we're just not uploading for the day or whatever, I know we're right now we're doing the Super Sundays where we're just talking about the superhero shows on Sundays. Um, but there's other areas to find content from us, guys. So just make sure that you're keeping up with us on our Facebook, uh, our Twitter, our Instagram. Um, a lot of traffic and stuff going on on our TikTok. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us and we will be right there ready to answer anything you have or make some content that you guys want to see. So with that being said, we will see you guys later.